I had gone to Japan about six years ago and had a bowl of ramen, totally fell in love with it. I was working at Chez Panisse at the time and I got back to Chez Panisse, ran into Alice and I said, Alice, oh, I fell in love with ramen, it's so cool, I had an amazing experience in Japan. And she said, have you seen Tampopo? And I said, no, I, you know, I don't know what that is. And uh, she was the one who was like, well, you have to see it. It was one of my big inspirations. Went out, found a copy of the film, and it kind of changed everything. I'm Davia Nelson of the Kitchen Sisters on NPR, and I'm here with Alice Waters. And Alice, I have heard you speak of Tampopo so often. Do you remember where you were when you saw it? I don't remember where I was when I saw it. I don't. Uh, I just know that I had just opened Cafe Fanny, a tiny little coffee uh, shop in Berkeley between Acme Bread Company and Kermit Lynch Wine. And it was just the size of, I think, the ramen shop in the film. It was a film that meant a whole lot to me. And I was so interested in the way that that film looked at ingredients, that they wanted to know where something came from and how to make the perfect chicken stock for the ramen and the noodles. And it really captured something about the way we like to cook at Chez Panisse. And it's a food film. It's one of the few sensual food films that are in my little uh, library in my mind. It's just slightly erotic, and everybody was completely fascinated. And so I insisted that everybody who worked at Cafe Fanny see that film. I fell in love with Tampopo the first time I saw it. I revisit it frequently. So much was uh, about f finding the perfect bowl of ramen. Uh, and I, I think you're, you're kind of watching that happen in the film. She's trying to achieve this amazing bowl that finally kind of hits on all the marks. For me, ramen is this very individual experience to walk into a place and have this complete meal in a bowl. It has the meat, it's got the starch, it's got the beautiful vegetables. It feels like it's this little bowl of just like perfect sustenance. Before we opened our place, we were going to Japan a lot and going to really three to four ramen places a day, eating way too many bowls of noodles. And every time we'd go, we'd, we'd go, oh, that egg was perfect, or that broth was perfect, or the noodles. I, I want to figure out how they do the noodles. And so there was a lot of kind of honing in on what the perfect bowl of ramen was for us. Uh, and I, I think that that film was very validating, that it, it's a worthwhile pursuit to kind of chase this perfect bowl. Ramen is really only a little over 100 years old. The story goes that there was this Mongolian lake bed that was, had kind of an alkaline quality to the water and they would make noodles and boil them in, the, in this water and they realized that the alkalinity of the water, boiling the noodles in the water, gave it this extra kind of bounce to it. There's all these kind of Chinese students uh, who moved to Japan, and there's these kind of early precursor types of ramen where it's really just broth and noodles, and they're selling it to prostitutes on the streets and in what turned into Tokyo. Um, and then, you know, post-World War II, there's this interesting moment where we, America, gives all this uh, massive amount of wheat and lard to Japan uh, to help people from not starving. They have this idea that they're going to be baking bread, but of course, nobody has ovens in Japan and nobody's eating bread, so all the wheat kind of gets turned into noodle making, and it becomes this thing where you've got a little bit of fat, you got a little bit of starch, you got some nice ingredients, and you have enough food to feed your family, and it's quick and easy, you know, and then it slowly evolves into building Tokyo and all these workers who just need a really quick, fatty, sustainable bowl. And then a lot of people who were in the white collar sector stopped working white collar and got into the you know, okay, I'm gonna go back to my hometown and open a ramen place. And then people started to really pay attention to ingredients and like, I'm gonna make the best ramen place I can.
ramen as it kind of came about was so much a reflection of each region. It is a local seasonal thing because that's kind of where it came from. You have Kyushu, you have tonkotsu broth because that's what you've got. You have butter corn in Hokkaido because that's what's happening up there. So tasting all the regional styles and realizing there's no one perfect kind of ramen. The perfect kind of ramen is the one that best reflects the area. So for us, it was, you know, that, that, that gave us the green light to, to kind of create a Northern California style of ramen. There's myself, Ray Neal de Guzman, and Jerry Jacksish, and the three of us really work together on coming up with the ramens. And those guys are the co-chefs, and they really have a beautiful sense of flavor of taking all these kind of Japanese ideas and, and figuring out how to marry them to more California Japanese ideas. This was not an individual effort, it was very much a kind of community effort. Uh, not unlike Tampopo where it, you know, you need the guy who knows the noodles and the guy who's going to do the interior and the guy who can nail the broth. Mm. What are you Our ramen noodles are egg and flour noodles. They have that extra little spring to them. They're meant to live in the broth. You know, noodles are there to soak up the broth and to embrace the flavor of everything that, that's around them. So it's a very particular type of noodle. And I feel like we're still figuring it out, having conversations about what perfect chashu is. That beautiful piece of pork that you find in your bowl of ramen can be any number of cuts. And sometimes it's shoulder, sometimes it's belly. You know, to use good, really good ingredients, it kind of makes your job a lot easier because everything just tastes so good. I feel like we've really nailed the veggie Meyer lemon ramen. For a lot of regulars, they come in, they get the veggie ramen with a slice of chashu, which I think is brilliant. I think the veggie ramen sums up a lot of our ideas that you don't always need to have a ton of meat to make something really flavorful and delicious. To me, so much of that film is about sensuality and, and not, not just sex sensuality, but this idea of really embracing your senses and, and what does it mean to be smelling things and tasting things and touching things. This is a restaurant where we smell, taste, touch, and talk about everything. And we're constantly uh, in pursuit of whether it's the perfect glass of wine or the perfect cocktail or the perfect bowl of ramen. That conversation is very much alive here. And I think it draws in a lot of creative people who have ideas about sensuality. Because the more you feel uh, connected to what you're eating, to what you're sharing, the more you feel connected to the people around you and the, the people that you work with. We have it in our uh, employee handbook that you have to have seen Tampopo to work here. Uh, I found out that some, not everybody had actually seen it. Uh, so we're like, okay, we're gonna set up a real proper viewing. It was amazing to see people watch it for the first time. I'm kind of used to some of the scenes and the ideas, but to watch people giggle in some of the awkward moments and it's funny and it's sexy and it's weird and it's a great art film, it's a great comedy, it's an amazing drama. And it was nice to see everybody kind of leave feeling so uh, validated by the film. It's like, okay, we're doing the right thing. We're making good bowls and noodles for people and that's like, that is a, that's something to strive for.